What's going on, buddy? My name is Welcome back to another video. And today, I say we're gonna be getting into the Von Tunin model uh, for AP Human Geography. This is a very cool model that'll show relationships uh, between where stuff is distributed, transportation costs, where the market is. Uh, you know, blah 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 blah. Let's get into this. So, the purpose of the Von Tunin model uh, shows land in different locations in different lengths from the market. So, what is used in this land and how far it is from the the market. This can also be determined by how uh, accessible transportation is. Now, something to know is that the market is supposed to be singular and flat, uh, but we know today that that isn't the case with markets today. Now, what is produced and when is produced is based. No, sorry. What is produced and when is based largely off the cost of transportation, which is determined by the location of location from the market. So the farther away something's going to be, uh, the the more expensive transportation is going to cost. All right, circle. <laughs> That's what I named this slide. Uh, but this is the market. Uh, and this is the featureless area where the products are sold. This is where our consumers are going to be, and it's going to be the middle of our our model. Then we see the first ring from the market, which is horticulture, as I pronounce it. Uh, and this is where the most intensive agriculture is located and where land is most expensive. So the closer to the market, the more intensive your agriculture is going to be and where land is more expensive. Now think back to 5.1. Intensive agriculture has less land than extensive agriculture. So it makes sense that they're going to have less land. And this probably is going to be due to land being a little more expensive than the outer rings or farther from the market. Uh, an example of this is dairy farming, market gardening. Uh, and these are because these all uh, create perishable items that need to get to the market quicker. Uh, milk spoils, so they need to get to market before it spoils to sell it for money. And then market gardening, this may include, you know, your fruits and vegetables that can grow mold, fungus, all these kind of things that uh, have that expiration date on that packaging of strawberries. So uh, stuff like that we're going to see uh, in our first ring of the market. So anything that really can perish quickly, uh, we're going to see closer to the market, usually in this first ring. Now, the second ring of the market is our forest area. Uh, this is where wood products are obtained and used to create things. So we see uh, deforestation, uh, maybe factories that use uh, wood to create things, maybe like uh, pencils, chairs, uh, boxes. I don't know. I'm trying to think of things made of wood. But think of wood. Think of our second ring. Think of our forest. Uh, now, wood is also used as fuel. Uh, and is difficult to transport. So it makes sense that wood's going to be kind of close to the market, but since it doesn't really perish, uh, it's going to be a little farther away. But however, it is difficult to transport. So we got to keep it closer to the market than some other things. And it is very important to have its use as fuel, maybe in factories uh, for fire to keep people uh, living. <laughs> uh, so it needs to be accessible. And the closer it is to the market, the more accessible it's going to be to its consumers. Now, our third reading from the market is going to be our grains, so stuff like wheat and soybeans. Uh, and this is going to be the production of processing of grains, basically simple. And this can be stuff like, you know, maize, which is corn and wheat. Uh, and these are not a heavy transport, so they can be farther uh, from the market. It makes sense they can be farther from the market than our forest and perishable items. Uh, and then our non-perishable items are also grown here that can last all day. They're not necessarily always grain, uh, but we know like corn and wheat are non-perishable. And then of course our other non-perishable items are probably going to be grown in this ring as well. So that's something good to know. Now we're on our fourth ring for the market, which is going to be our livestock, our living animals. Uh, the reason for this is that they need space to thrive. So the farther away from the market, the more land there's going to be. Uh, that's going to be more space for this livestock to thrive. Uh, and this is where the most extensive practices are practiced uh, with the cheapest farmland. Extensive has bigger land. They need more land for the livestock to thrive. Uh, this kind of call like ranching and stuff if you remember back to 5.1 uh and they need to have the cheapest farmland uh for the livestock makes sense uh and then it's cheap farmland because it's farther from the markets uh and the thing about this is livestock have legs they can walk to the market so they don't really need much transportation there's not many uh transportation troubles because they are mobile 
Now, the world today, the model, uh, the Von Tunen model doesn't always confer, conform for certain regions due to technological advancements. Uh, so this can uh, determine how the mod, like the model, the Von Tunen model may not always, you know, confirm today because of technological advancements. We see, uh, you know, genetic stuff. We see technology that makes things easier or harder, changes things in our crops, in our products, uh, transportation advancements. Maybe it can be quicker for some livestock to get to the market than our perishable items, uh, in certain regions due to, uh, transportation advancements. Uh, we see more long-term stuff and short-term stuff, or maybe it's going to be uh, more long-term stuff in the middle and short-term in the closer and the farthest. It depends on the region to region. Uh, and then there's physical geography. Uh, we noticed that the market was supposed to be flat and featureless, but we can see mountains in certain markets. Uh, we can see water boundaries. We can see other uh, things that can uh, dictate uh, where the market is or where certain areas are. And then, of course, different climates, how hot and cold something is. Maybe wood can't grow in certain areas near the market, so they're going to be very far away. So uh, where wood can't grow, where nothing can grow, they'll put the livestock there, change things up. That's an example there. Uh, multiple markets. Uh, of course, we're going to see multiple markets. Around the world. There's not one store in America. There's not one store in the world. We're going to see markets around the world. We're going to see markets for a company around the world. Uh most chain companies they are around the world so stuff's going to be different to them so costs are going to be different for transportation uh so stuff's made in china and they got to go to like california united states or london united kingdom uh stuff's going to be different there we're going to see physical geography differences climate differences transportation stuff uh economic issues uh so this model has some faults in it and we just pointed out some faults in the von Tunen model and yeah that's the end of the video thank you so much for watching uh please subscribe it really does help me out and you can change your mind if you don't like my content later on like the video as well leave your comment with your criticism i love criticism join my discord server uh, to teach other people new things or to learn something yourself i got nothing else for y'all so adios